Welcome back to Headingham and here we are today with Jace uh, and we're in the yard because today we're going to show you all our efforts and our attempts to make Headingham a lot more sustainable and um, you know we really really are trying to reduce our carbon footprint the whole time and we just have to take it slowly and do everything as we always do with cash flow. So the first thing we're going to show you is our wood chip boiler which I don't know anything about and when it goes wrong I just light a fire because I don't know. So this was a project we started I think it was around 2014. I'll go and make it up. Um, and there were a bunch of grants that you could get if you switched and we were um, on gas, mains gas. Um, and I would say to people if you have a kilowatt of mains gas that takes two million years to create and if you have a kilowatt of wood chip that takes about 30 years to create and there is a bit of carbon but it means uh, we can manage all our woodland here and we're cutting down a 15 acre wood uh, of messy willows planting cricket batteries which we'll show you later and we now basically generate all the heat for the castle um, and for the house using this incredible system let's have a look there's nothing small at Eddingham uh, and this is a 200 uh, kilowatt boiler um, and essentially it's pretty basic um, and if we're lucky, basically have a look. Yeah. So ash goes, it, the wood chip gets pushed in from next door. We use about 120 tons a year of chips, some of which is from us, some of which we buy in locally. Um, and it gets fed in here, and we have to do quite a lot of cleaning, quite a lot of maintenance. But it's a really good feeling. Uh, this is a 4,000 litre four tons of hot water that basically is a sort of heat reservoir and this is the auger that feeds everything through from next door from the smaller chip store drops it in feeds it down this tube into here up into the boiler it's just fired up you can hear it and then the chamber inside feeds it up heats all the water the water goes in here it's 83 degrees at the moment and uh, it's a pretty impressive system the amount of wizardry and compressors and electronics and dials, uh, pumps, um, and it's pretty good. We're, we're able to um, add the top floor of the castle, so that's our next project. Get some heating up there, basically to make a bedroom. Um, and it was a big, brave decision, because it was a lot of money. Um, one's incentivized to do it, but you still had to take a big, deep breath and commit those resources. And then all the archeology, span getting the heating pipes, which we'll show you on some other films that we've got of the adventures we had finding loads of amazing things in the ground. So the next project we're going to show you is the well. Our next project, which is water, um, because we have a huge water bill that's on mains. Um, and everything was very natural in the 18th century. And we've basically recently cut in this top through an old uh, manhole. And we're very tempted. To, we were a little bit surprised at the scale of what we discovered. So what I'm doing here is opening up the uh, manhole um, because it's a pretty serious as you're going to see it's a pretty unbelievable construction and this just goes to show you, you should never take anything for granted in life so just you have to imagine the scale of the engineering project the amount of the, the, the 40 foot deep, 8 foot wide, I mean cubic meter wise, it's pretty unbelievable and you're standing right on top of it. Um, and back then you dug a well by basically kind of digging a hole, dropping the bricks, adding more bricks, digging a hole under the bricks, dropping, 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 dropping. So it's the most incredibly sophisticated system of building wells and you know, here it is just sitting under this concrete cap. So it's an engineering wonder, it's pretty fantastic. So this is the top of the main block of the Georgian house. And I'm trying to think, was it seven or eight years ago? About eight years ago, um, big incentive from the government to go Do you know, it was longer solar. than that. I'd say it was more like 13 years ago, because it no, was it when we were doing the... Oh, OK. Um, so we put 42 solar panels. We've got a 10 kilowatt system. And 
you were basically incentivized. Um, lot you had to pay the capital cost to put them in, and we thought, where are we going to put them? The only place suitable was on the main chunk. It's pretty incredible. We managed to get 42 panels on the roof, and basically it generates quite a lot of electricity every year. Some of which goes back into the grid, which is very nice. Some of which we use, and we're incentivized by being paid per kilowatt quite handsomely. We, you get in different tariff levels. Um, and each of these little things helps. I mean, some people cover their warehouses in them. This is what we had, and we didn't want to compromise the architecture. This is what English Heritage allowed us to do. So they're not totally optimized, are they? As yeah, because south facing yeah. is that way behind you, um, and that would just look ugly if there were racks of solar panels. So you probably lose 15% of the input from the sun, um, and you've got the chimneys. But in the scheme of things, it works pretty well, and the, the amount of kilowatts generated every year might be seven or eight thousand. And um, isn't it right that the Georgians used to use the top, the flat roofs, as a sort of place to perambulate? So that's why we had to leave a little bit at the end there. Yes, yeah, so it's rather like you yeah. walk and you get a feeling of the relationship. Where we're standing in the Norman times was all the outbuildings of the castle on the second bit of the figure of eight. And over there is the main bit of the figure of eight, the first one, and we're on the second one. And that just shows the relationship. This would be farm buildings, horses, uh, you know, the people who you know, repaired metal work, the armourers, they all lived on this bit. And then the castle was over there and that was as a higher prestige. To get over there over the drawbridge, that would have been harder. But it's quite fun. And we've got the old skylight here. I got a bit obsessed about putting a mirror to optimise the <laughs> reflection onto the solar panels. I don't think that was very effective. But Jace's other name is Heath Robinson. So, you know, yeah. QED. I used to have all the um, Heath Robinson books when I was younger, and uh, I've ended up becoming <laughs> Heath Robinson's you have to be imagination. Careful what you read. Lucky you didn't read Rambo or something. So, what we've got here is 120 tons, uh, which is one year's supply of timber that we need. This is bought in timber from local forest, probably Thetford. This is conifer, and this just demonstrates the scale of what we need per annum. Oh. We leave it here for a year. Uh, to dry out a bit and then we get a massive uh, um, wood chipper and it chips the whole lot in a few hours and then we use that which we'll show you and that lives in Man Cave 3. So this is the scale of what's needed. And this is, this is the boiler isn't it? That's yeah this is our heating basically instead of, so as I said before, um, what gets fed into the boiler um, is this stuff but chipped. Uh, we've got about 50 acres of woodland here so not a lot left in terms of the, the original estate. But every time a tree falls down, rather than ringing it, trying to set it for firewood, we leave it as a 12 foot length, goes on the pile. And it's a brilliant system because we can now manage our woodland really more for amenities. But before, we couldn't justify having the machines, the JCB, which I'll show you, the forestry trailer and the crane. Everyone's got to have lots of big toys. Can I, can I point out the, the number here, Man Cave 3? He's, he's not allowed, he, he doesn't need rather one or two Man Caves. This is number 3. And he's already planning his ball. Just saying that he quite likes his toys. Uh, so this is the chip shed, not Man Cave 3. <laughs> Someone else did that, not me. And what is, uh, is actually man cave. the end product of chipping all the timber? Uh, you end up with this shed basically full of wood chips. It's all to do with moisture content. And I can tell you, you know, that's going to be a mixture of a bit of conifer, a bit of willow, you know, occasional bits of better hardwood if we have them, but uh, it all goes in here. We pick it up with the JTB, bring it up to the hopper by the house. That uh, bucket takes 0.7 of a ton, and we measure it very accurately, and then we report every quarter to uh, Ofgem, who monitor how much we're using. Um, and this is getting to the end. Here we are at the end of March, and uh, the boiler will be turned off. Uh, it, basically for heating in kind of early, early May. Yeah. Um, it also um, provides a very good surging slope for when, when the, you know, we have young children to stay in things and when our lot were really little and you get the sled at the top and you can really get some pace up before you get to the bottom, it's very important. And the other beauty of the JCB is you can put other gadgets on it. So we've got a really good manly gadget around here, which I love. Come have a look at this one. Have a look at it from this side. It's quite an industrial size claw that um, we can pick up any scale of tree or whatever else we want to. 
and you can basically put different things on it and it's the power of that gadget incredible thanks to Mr. Bamford and whoever invented hydraulics. <laughs>